Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Banking Finance Specialization Talk. Uh, I am Dr. Shanika Sharan Wong, a lecturer in Banking and Finance Division at Nanyang Business School. Joining me here is our alumni, Mr. Jeremy Tan. Jeremy, uh, please introduce yourself. Sure. Good afternoon, everybody. So I'm Jeremy. I graduated uh, from MBS in 2018, uh, currently working as a Corporate Strategy Associate uh, for Abdul Latif Jamil, a Middle Eastern conglomerate. Okay, uh, Jeremy will share his experiences at MBS and also his working experiences with us today. All right, when we talk about the banking and finance, okay, uh, we are talking about how to manage money, right? If you are specialized in banking and finance, uh, you will learn how to perform the financial management of a corporation and or individual, okay? You will learn about a financial market, how uh, financial intermediaries and institutions operate, how to invest, how to evaluate the financial projects, and how to price the any financial assets, etc. Okay, so let's see why specialize in banking and finance. I will talk about two main aspects. The first aspect is about the career path opportunity. Okay, we all know that financial sector is very important for our Singapore economy. Uh, the sector contributes close to 16% of nominal GDP of our economy and employs around 170,000 people. And in the last five years, about 21,000 financial sector jobs were created, and about 76% uh, of these jobs go to Singaporeans. Okay? And in the first nine months of uh, year 2021 last year, uh, the financial sec services sector grew by 8% even during the COVID situation, okay? And it created 2,000 net jobs. 100% uh, of these jobs went to local. So you can see that when we look at the jobs uh, in financial sector, it's still bright. And moreover, MAS aims to make Singapore the leading global financial center in Asia by developing eight key focus areas asset management, enterprise financing, wealth management, foreign exchange and derivative, fixed income, infrastructure finance, sustainable finance. Uh, MAS also encouraged banks to come up with a more green financing method and also uh, more green products. Okay? And the last focus is uh, in insurance and risk financing. Uh, according to the IBF or the Institute of Banking and Finance, uh, the industry leaders have identified six main key skills needed by finance, finance practitioners okay, in our changing industry now. Uh, those are six skills on the screen. All the finance employees should be aware of digital technology should have uh, entrepreneurial thinking, should be able to analyze any data uh, to come up with a good uh, decision making, and also have good communication with customers and engage customers through the digital platform, and have ability to design products and services from based on the customer's perspective. And the last skill that we did is uh, how to manage the risk arising from new technology. Okay, so you can see that banking and finance specialization provides good career path opportunity. Yeah. Right? You agree with it? Ah, definitely. <laughs> I think it gives a good foundation. Yes. All right. Now let's talk about the second uh, aspect. Okay, job and salary. Uh, during the last two or three years, uh, COVID pandemic situation, some sectors got hard hit. Okay, having wages cut. But you can see from the chart on the screen that uh, in year 2020, the wages in the financial insurance services sector still grew at 3.4%, mm -hmm. although lower, lower rate than the uh, year 2019, okay? which, is, uh, which was 5.6%. Okay, so you can see that in year 2020, uh, fin the wages in financial and insurance se services sector still have growth 
highest growth uh, among various industries, mm -hmm. okay, among various sectors. And uh, when we talk about some of uh, high paying finance jobs include uh, portfolio managers, investment banker, actually, uh, quantitative analyst, and security trader. Okay? And according to Morgan McKinley salary report, okay, they classify uh, annual salary uh, for the banking and finance in Singapore into three main categories. Uh, the depending on the range of the service, five to 10 years, 10 to 15 years, and more than 15 years, okay? Uh, you can see that the highest paying jobs in banking and finance in Singapore are those in the investment banking, okay? And followed by private banking and commercial banking, right? Now let's talk about all fresh graduates. Uh, last year class, class of 2021, uh, we, the graduate, okay, under the single degree banking finance specialization, the employment rate is about 96.3%. For the double degree accountancy and banking finance, uh, the employment rate is 98.7%. Uh, and these are the top five industry sectors that our fresh graduate are working in. Okay, the first three are financial and insurance sector. Second one is the information and info, uh, communication sector. And the third is the legal accounting and auditing, right? The top occupations are sales professionals, financial analysts, uh, very popular, uh, information technology project manager, we have fund portfolio manager, and also security dealer and broker as well. Uh, our fresh graduate class of 2021 were placed in many banks, okay, both foreign and local, right? For example, Goldman Sachs, uh, Bank of America, Deutsche Bank, uh, Citibank, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, HSBC, DBS, okay, and so on. And not only in banks, they are work. They are working in other corporations and manufacturers as well, such as uh, Coca-Cola, uh, Procter and Gamble, Johnson and Johnson, Dyson, Singtel. Okay, these are the example of of their employer employers only. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see what industry our fresh graduate are uh, working in. Uh, for the single degree banking finance specialization, about 67% are in finance and insurance sector, followed by 6% in information and communication sector, and 6% in public administration and defense. Okay? But for the bird degree, uh, accountancy and banking finance, uh, about 58% are in financial and insurance sector, and 13% in legal accounting and auditing because uh, they have uh, accounting background yeah. too, right? Yeah, so they work in the legal accounting and auditing sector. And another 8% in information and communication, okay? So you can see that when we talk about banking finance specialization, this specialization provides you with a good career path mm -hmm. opportunity and also good job and salary, right? Mm. Now, Let's see why banking and finance at MBS. Okay. Firstly, our faculty has reputation, good reputation. Okay. And there are over 30 full-time faculty uh, come from different or various countries. Okay. And many of them have industry working experience. Secondly, our program, we have three-year program, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, corner, honor, yes. okay, oh. and four-year double degree program. Uh, we revise our program regularly, and all the courses are revised to meet the demand from the industry. Okay, uh, let's talk a bit about the classroom. Uh, by average, there are about uh, 35 to 45 students per class. Okay, and uh, we have both individual uh, assignment and uh, group work assignment that involves team-based learning, okay? And our university also partner with the 
CFA and CAIA. Thirdly, while banking and finance at NBS, our program provides internship opportunity. Okay? Uh, we offer uh, opportunity to, for students to do internship more than one internship. Okay? Uh, we will talk a bit more. Uh, Jeremy will share experience of his internship with us later. Right? At the end of year one, uh, students will do the first internship uh, during the holiday, okay, school holiday. Uh, we call professional attachment, and uh, duration of this internship is about 8 to 10 weeks. After that, in year two and three, students can choose to do additional internship. We, uh, we, we are partners with uh, many financial companies in financial sector, okay, including banks. Okay? And moreover, students can uh, extend their internship through the work study pro degree program. Okay? And this program is supported by MAS. Right? If you do internship after work study degree program, you will earn AU as well. Okay? And the uh, duration for the internship under work study degree program is uh, about uh, 25 weeks up until maximum 35 weeks. That means students can take leave of absence for the whole long semester okay, to do internship. Uh, we provide many opportunities for internship so that students can explore different roles in different industries. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And you can make decision after graduate uh, whether which, uh, which area that you want to work for. Right? Mm -hmm. Lastly, we have beautiful campus. Okay? We have Nanyang Garden in front of our business school building and uh, one good thing is we are going to have a new business building right uh, large wooden building okay constructed using mass engineered timber okay so this new building uh, will be beautiful and look natural okay and also meet the sustainability perspective okay and one last thing I would like to mention is uh, we also at NBS we also have a strong career of office services okay uh, Jeremy okay uh, you are a double degree student right accountancy yes. and banking and finance and uh, why did you choose banking and finance as your second oh, degree second. yeah yeah, I think um, an interesting story about this, right? So I think when I first pursued MBS or NTU uh, as an undergrad opportunity or as an undergrad degree, uh, I wanted accounting. So like I'm a very accounting guy. I, I keep track of my expenses. I'm that sort of guy. So to me, accounting was something that I wanted to. And then what eventually persuaded me or what attracted me actually, not really persuaded, attracted me to go into the double degree was, was the fact or I attended such tea sessions. Back then, it was held at MBS. It was a nice tea session. You go around with food, you attend sessions, and ultimately, it, the double degree program and the business program, it boosted your prospects. You know, as an undergraduate or as a graduate of after finishing your degree. So to me, that was ultimately what attracted me to taking an accountancy and business program. And then eventually, when I had to decide, you know, the second part of it, right, the business part, what specialization, what specialization do I go in? Um, that was when. I think there are two different aspects. So one aspect is that um, for banking and finance wise, uh, I, did, I think it did uh, complement accounting, my accounting degree re rather well. And also I was also interested in exploring the finance roles. So the different banking industry roles that Dr. Chanika mentioned just now. So those were things I was interested in exploring. And secondly, honestly, I think it was more of a like GPA strategic de decision, <laughs> I would say, because I'm a more numbers person. So I think that I would perform a little bit better in banking and finance modules. And ultimately, that led to me, you know, going to banking and finance, and it turned out well. I enjoyed my classes there, and uh, yeah, it was a good oh, career prospect wow. after that. Okay, good yeah. to hear that. <laughs> yes. Okay, and uh, did you join any club during your time at MBS? Uh, within MBS, no, I really didn't join any clubs within MBS. I did join the orientation camp committee. So uh, that back then, uh, that was one of the areas that I contributed back uh, to MBS as student leader there. Uh, two years, one year as a committee member, and the second year as ex co. Uh, and I think for me, during that period of experience, it was very, it was interesting. Was, that was also a period whereby 
there was quite a bit of scrutiny from the media on, 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 on orientation camps, right? So I think that, that was where change had to happen, and that was the experience that we had to go through. And I enjoyed my time there giving the good experience to the new freshmen coming in. Yeah, okay. Uh, actually, we have uh, many academic clubs, right? Yeah, we have investment club, banking finance club. We have investment interactive club, mm. Nanyang Capital Club. Okay, many kind of clubs. Uh, but I have heard that you have jo you joined uh, one club. Oh. It's not an academic club, yeah. right? Cultural club, what is that? Uh, so the cultural aspect, uh, I did join uh, and kind of started up uh, is Harmonix. So it's an, basically out of NBA, it's more at the NTU level under the Cultural Activities Club. So it's basically an a cappella group that promotes a cappella music and we also perform a cappella music in, uh, within NTU. So uh, I think that, that, that the element of it, it's also maybe one part that I would share a little bit more later as to that's where you can really explore a lot of what you want within NTU. The resources are there as long as you are keen to kind of push yourself to explore, to, to, to grab whatever resources there are, you know, there, the opportunities are there. Yeah. All right, okay. And uh, what do you think about NBS culture, oh. our culture, about our people, our society I around NBS? For me, I did enjoy the NBS culture. I think largely it's a very vibrant school faculty itself, right? So I think part of it, maybe it's the students that come through to accountancy and business, uh, they are a little more outgoing, and in classes, the curriculum kind of, it expects you to speak out a bit more. It expects you to work together with people in projects, to present, to present yourself a little bit more, you know, as business professionals and accounting professionals. So I think that's where everybody's personality is a bit more, you know, we're chit-chat, and, and they have great memories around MBS, the whole campus. And I think as what Dr. Charika mentioned, I think one of the non-academic clubs in, uh, in MBS, the ABC, I'm not sure if they're mm -hmm. still around, but they are the ones that also kind of organize quite a bit of uh, events, social events, welfare, you know, the kids, the campus, not just here for studying. You're here to meet your friends, you're here to interact with others, to know about more things. So I think that, that made the campus life actually more interesting. Okay, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Uh, to specialize in banking and finance, okay, students don't need to have a good, uh, math okay or statistic right uh, but uh, you should feel familiar okay be comfortable in dealing with numbers okay because uh, many advanced finance costs over finance costs uh, may involve with the more quantitative content right so let's see the banking and finance cost curriculum uh, you have to take to four courses Okay, ethics in the investment profession and investment course. Okay, and then choose six elective that we call prescribed elective courses from all these courses available. Okay, we classify these courses into four main clusters: wealth management, asset management, investment banking, and fintech cluster. Right? If you know what you are going to work. If you know what area you are going to work in after your graduation, for example, you want to work in, you want to be a wealth manager, okay? So you may choose more elective courses under the wealth management cluster. See? If you want to work or explore in a fintech, up, fintech industry after your graduation, you may want to choose more courses under fintech cluster, right? But if you don't know which area you are going to work in after graduation, don't feel stressed because you can choose any six elective courses from all these courses across four clusters. For example, you may choose wealth management under the wealth management cluster, uh, fixed income security under asset management cluster, uh, financial modeling under investment banking cluster and blockchain and AI and the fintech cluster. Okay, so you can choose any six elective classes across these four clusters if you are not sure what area you are going to work in after graduation, right? You also have uh, options to choose minor in strategic uh, communication or international tethering, okay? Uh, there are other minor courses for you to choose from other school as well. Okay, and you also have option to choose the second major in entrepreneurship. Uh, this, this is a joint program between Nanyang Business School and the Nanyang 
uh, Technopreneurship Center. Okay, this full-time three-year uh, degree uh, also offers twenty-week uh, hands-on experiential session. Okay, so you will uh, actually entrepreneurship uh, major also complement uh, banking and finance master of business as well. Okay, because uh, uh, when you go into the real world working, you may want to start up your own company, right? Mm. So the courses in the second major in entrepreneurship will help you to, you know, have a vision how to start the company and how to deal with the finance of the company, which is very important uh, division of the corporation, right? Okay, now, Jeremy, uh, at NBS, did you find banking and finance course courses hard? Yes. <laughs> so like, I, I would definitely say like the expectations were met and exceeded. Um, banking and finance courses, they are definitely rigorous. So I think for me, th those were challenging. So, uh, but eventually what you had to do, right, eventually to kind of conquer this, uh, uh, this um, courses, eventually is that uh, there's a lot of preparation required. So because the, the courses themselves are rather rigorous, Ultimately, you have to prepare for the classes. And uh, honestly, it's for all classes. I would say for <laughs> other current grads or uh, current, uh, current undergrads or you know, incoming students, uh, it's, you have to prepare for all, co co all courses, uh, read them thoroughly so that eventually you do learn a, li a little bit more during classes, can clarify questions. So yeah, I would say, I would say rigorous. I think so that's one part of it. Mm. And then secondly, I would say in banking and finance, it is competitive. So like as competitive as you hear in the industry itself, it kind of starts way in undergrad. You know, like students here are competitive, you know, they all want to get an A's, their A plus, and whatever that higher score is. So people do put, as in, I think in general, people put in all, all the effort, and but in banking and finance, I would say I observe people putting in a lot more effort to getting that A's, and, and that's where, um, yeah, you're competitive, and therefore that makes the courses even more challenging to even mm. score your grades. Do you yeah. have any additional advice for the new student when they come into year one, right? Mm. And they have to take a courses that haven't, they haven't taken before, mm. right? A statistic, financial management, accounting, business law, mm. etc. okay? So how to do well for these courses? What have you done in the, at NBS? Yeah, uh, I think for this, there are two parts to it. I think with banking and business degree in general, uh, a lot of them, because of the of the age that we're living in now, a lot of information are really readily available online. So I do one, one part of it is that, you know, do prepare yourself in, for classes by researching online for some points that you don't know. I honestly think that most of them would be available there. There's obviously some intricacies within the, the, the knowledge itself or, or the uh, theory itself that requires, you know, more clarification, but ultimately prepare for that one. And then the second part of it is, for me, what helped me through the four years was to have a study group. So for me, I think study group was very important. Uh, I had a few group of trusted friends uh, that I had throughout the four years that, you know, because everybody had their own strength. And, and, that, and that's where you play to that, right? Both in, in, in group works and also in, in your study as well. So you, when you have questions on certain aspects, you know, you have this group of friends, can always ask, can always clarify, can always debate, even about uh, things that you understand in class or different topics. So I think that did help me through my four years in MBS. Hmm. Actually, right now, uh, for year one courses, many year one courses offer peer tutoring session mm. now. Yeah, yes. it's, uh, it's a good experience for the student and also for the peer tutors. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right. Uh, now, let's talk a bit about internships. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you think that more internships would really help students in their career or only one uh, specific internship? would be sufficient? Uh, from my perspective, I think there's never enough <laughs> for internship. <laughs> I think internship is really where you discover what you like. So maybe a, a bit more beyond that, right? So I think, one, so there are two parts to it that I would say, I would share about this. So I think before even engaging in internship, I think there are uh, workshops, there are sessions, there are career talks that you can have before exploring internships to discover what is out there. Well, personally, that was how uh, I found uh, management consulting as a career eventually. It was actually through a one-hour workshop that was held, I think, either by MBS Career Office or NTU Career Office. It was a one-hour workshop whereby 
an ex McKenzie lady, she had a one hour case interview with the students in the seminar room. And then at the end of that one hour, it was the most alive, as mm -hmm. in it's a bit geeky, but it's the most alive that I felt ever after the one hour. And, and that actually kind of pivoted my career prospect. So I think to me, that's one aspect, you know, to go as much, and there are a lot out there, not even beyond NTU, there are a lot of these kind of sessions, workshops, uh, introductory classes for you to attend, to understand the career. And then roughly, if you have a gauge of what suits you, then explore internship. Because internship, eventually, it's where you actually practice what, what people say, right? And then eventually, that's where you kind of know whether this is for you, this is not for you. And you know, different companies, different size of companies also matters. So, so that kind of gives you an idea of okay, what kind of company size you want to kind of work in. Yeah. And how many internships did you have? And can you share your experience of internships with us? Yeah, sure. Uh, I had, I think, I would say three of uh, three, three internships that I had. So I think one was a uh, year two, there's a compound. It's like back then, it was year two professional attachment. Mm -hmm. So that was when year two onwards I started in my professional attachment. And because I shared just now, since the end of year one, I had inclination towards management consulting. And that was where all my uh, internships were kind of landed towards that. So that's where I explored uh, a boutique consulting firm uh, for my year two internship. Uh, that was a great experience. It was a smaller, uh, out, uh, outfit, uh, the consultancy company focused more on risk management um, and also a bit more of uh, private equity aspect of it. So to me, that, that, that gives me a view of you know, how a small run boutique consulting company runs. And the things that with this kind of company is what you get is the exposure to a very, my, my partner. So basically, the, the, it was a very flat hierarchy, mm -hmm. right, in, in this kind of small outfit. So, but it's just your partner and then your partner has 30 over ex years of experience in the industry. So there's a lot to get from them, a lot to learn from them through the experience there. So that was my first one. And then the second one was this Accenture. So Accenture is more of a bigger corporation. They have multiple offices. And that's where you kind of see how you, how you perform within a bigger, way, way bigger organization, how things are, how things are more structured there, uh, what kind of opportunities, opportunities you have there. So I think that was an interesting uh, part as well with Accenture. And then after how that- How long, how long? That was actually for three months. So the first one was Dragonfly. So that was a, a boutique consulting firm. I did a part-time and then I did a full-time during summer. And then with Accenture, it was a 10 weeks. Mm. It was quite a short 10 weeks program. And thereafter, I took an LOA for six months. Uh, so what I've mentioned previously was more external consulting, whereby you face clients. So eventually what I had for my last six months was an internal consulting role. So it was with Allianz Consulting uh, and with many of the European countries they actually do have such consulting teams that are being set up, uh, European, sorry, European companies. And a lot of consulting teams that are set up uh, within the company. And so what these internal consulting teams, they do is they help with the transformation projects, help with the strategy of the companies themselves. So beyond the company looking for external, they also do help internal companies themselves. So that's one, you're facing more internal stakeholders. And then ultimately, some of them, they actually, a few key examples, right? DHL, um, Volkswagen. Once you get so good at being consulting within your company, you do also branch out. So they eventually also set up their own consulting companies outside, and they are branded as DHL Consulting, specializing in sp supply chain, or Volkswagen specializing in automotive. So I think that was quite an interesting uh, part of management consulting that I kind of explored in my last six months. And then uh, eventually with that, uh, uh, yeah, I landed my first job after I graduated. Okay, <laughs> all right, yeah. that's good. Oh, three internships. Yeah, yeah, three internships. Okay, and uh, how do you cope with NBS uh, student life? You <laughs> see, uh, you have uh, internships, right? You have three internships, yeah. and you have to study uh, hall activities, sport, uh, competition, or co-curriculum. Yeah. yeah, so many kind of activities. How did you cope with it? Uh, I would say for me, I would definitely say my four years with NTU and MBS, it's been hectic. Uh, <laughs> I think one of my <laughs> biggest motto as in when I came into NTU or when I started as undergrad was work hard, play hard. So, you know, I really <laughs> participated in quite a bit of activities that in hall, that within MBS itself, as during the orientation camps, uh, outside of NTU, uh, outside of MBS, within NTU, uh, I joined consulting clubs. Uh, there was the a cappella club that I was mentioning just now. So I think what I would say about coping is that um, I feel like this undergrad four years that you have or three years that you have, it's a very interesting part of your life whereby you, know, you are kind of free from the traditional 
secondary school, JC, or poly education, but it's kind of defined by um, the curriculum, by the school. But as an undergrad, uh, you can choose what you want to do. Mm. You can take control, you have a bit more responsibility of what you want to explore in school. So to me, I think that's what drove my decisions when I came into N NTU as an undergrad and different activities that I joined. I wanted to maximize what I have. And I was telling just now, right? So like, there are a lot of resources, resources out there. So, um, and the faculty members, the, the school itself, they are very supportive of student-led activities. They want students to succeed. They want students to basically be a better person after the four or three years uh, with NTU and MBS. So I think to me, that's what kind of eventually led to the different activities. Uh, and to cope, I would say, <laughs> you have to kind of deal with less sleep, <laughs> to be very <laughs> frank up there. But ultimately, what you have is a, max, a very maximized, uh, fulfilled three, four years in school. Uh, you meet a lot of people. You, you, you connect with a lot of people uh, with outside MBS. So I think that's one thing I would encourage people to do. Beyond MBS itself, do speak to people from other faculties. Because in terms of perspective, and that's where in work life as well, you do not all, you're not working with all business students. You're working with people from engineering background, you're working from people from computer science background. You need to be able to manage that. Because there are different ways of people thinking through things, of how people problem solve. And that's where, uh, if you do also step out of MBS, when you're undergrad here, and go talk to people, talk to people, interact with people, work with people outside MBS, that's where you know and learn how to be more flexible in the workplace. Uh, so I think that, that's one aspect that I would say. Mm. Yeah. Actually, interesting yeah. motto, uh, work hard, pay hard. I like that one. But actually, it depends on the individual's ability, whether they can cope with work mm. hard, pay hard, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So you have to look at your own ability as well, okay? Whether you can cope with it uh, and prioritize it, okay? Yeah. Which activity you have to do first, okay? Prioritize it. And maybe if I may on the prioritizing part, yeah. I think eventually, uh, Ultimately, you have to know, like, yes, work hard, play hard, and eventually, at the end of four years, you know that you will have to land a job. Mm. Or, 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 or at least somewhat of something that kind of sustains you as, and working, uh, as an adult moving forward. So I think that's where you have to keep that goal in mind. And honestly, and, and I think I was sharing with Dr. Chanika previously during our sessions as well, I do think that NBS itself, we have a good career office. We have a very strong career office. Um, so that's where you can always look to, to, at least that was for me as undergrad, I look to them, um, to give advice on how do I enter this industry that, you know, um, it was not really heard of within, within NTU at the point of time. So they give a lot of advice, they give opportunities, you know, as long as you don't speak to them, they are willing to help. So I think to me that's one. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay, uh, now let's talk a bit about after graduation, yes. okay? <laughs> uh, four years life in NBS, you know already what, what uh, did it look like, right? Mm. Now talk about the after graduation. How did you find your first job? And uh, can you share with us about your first working experience after graduation? Sure. Uh, so with the first job, how I landed it, so I was sharing my journey was more after year one, you know, I knew management consulting was something that I was interested in. I took a few internships. Uh, and eventually how I landed it was that uh, that period whereby I was finding jobs after, uh, before I graduate, it was all focused on consulting companies. So like basically, my resume was kind of built towards that. That's one thing. And then secondly was that, you know, I was focused on a trying my best to do uh, an ace in these interviews as well. So I was quite focused on that. Uh, and eventually that landed me to a role that I was quite satisfied with or happy with, uh, which was with Booz Allen Hamilton. It was the first consulting, uh, management consulting role that I had. Uh, so it is a management consulting company. Uh, I think in terms of experience there, it was interesting. So because with Booz Allen in the Asia office, they were very focused on cybersecurity. So it was an element that was something that I didn't really learn in school. So, so that's where eventually, uh, I think one aspect of that, and what that experience gave me was that you need to learn how to learn. I think that, that's ultimately one, one thing that you have to know out in the field, right? So like, when, because you, you can't always be working in the same, or it depends. So if you really want a particular topic, then yes, go, go for it. But sometimes if you want a variety, you always have new topics coming in. So you always have to learn how to learn a new topic and how do I succeed with this cybersecurity thing that I've never even learned. And frankly speaking, I'm not the best IT tech guy. So it was a, 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 an uphill battle or a, a uphill slope for me to learn and pick up. But eventually you get through it, you know how to pick things up uh, and, and things are readily, readily available online. So you, look, you talk to your colleagues and you, you, you pick things up online, you do your own readings. And eventually that kind of just 
you have to be independent like eventually in, in this kind of situations. Yeah. yeah. Actually, when we talk about learning, learning is the process, right? Along yes. your own, the whole life, yes. right? Yeah, it's learning process. Okay. Okay, so uh, that is your first job experience. Yes. Uh, did you use, uh, you know, our courses to apply in your first job? For my uh, first We yeah. will focus a bit more on the banking, banking finance. Yeah, yes. that you use uh, any contents, you know, uh, or concepts mm. from our courses to apply in your first job. Consultant, right? Yeah. Mm. For my first job, I would say not really, because for my first job, uh, yes, I was expected. I was expecting myself to apply actually the finance concepts um, into my first job as a management consultant. But ultimately, because the firm was focused more on cybersecurity and like more digital kind of work, uh, that I didn't manage to apply that because eventually it was a new topic that I had to pick up during during my work space, uh, workplace. Yeah, but I would say that in my second job, my current, my current opportunity, uh, I, I do. So currently, I'm working as a corporate strategist uh, within a uh, Middle Eastern uh, conglomerate. So uh, with that company, uh, what it has is that uh, its operations are primarily based in Middle East, so Saudi Arabia, uh, Turkey, Egypt. Um, and mainly, they are uh, automotive distributor, so they distribute vehicles within the country. And beyond that, after years of doing that and doing that very successfully, uh, they then pivoted into more industries. And that's why it became a conglomerate whereby they eventually, eventually ventured into financial services. And, and eventually I'll talk a bit more about how the courses here, they kind of led into that. So financial services, they have healthcare, so they're distributing healthcare products. Uh, they went into energy environment. So they have solar plants, they have water management plants. Uh, they have an investment company set up under them as well. So uh, it, it is a, a conglomerate with multiple industries under them. Uh, and uh, with, within my role in corporate strategy, um, we then kind of have to basically look in the different sectors. And then one thing is to figure out how to be competitive in this sector. How, how do we win in this sector? And that's mm -hmm. where we have to chart out what are the, based on the idea or based on the goals we have, what are the uh, activities that need to be done by the companies to achieve what we want to achieve. And beyond that, we also have to constantly look into the outside environment, right? So like things are constantly changing. And when I joined this company, it was during middle of COVID. So, so things are really changing for the companies and they have to learn uh, what, how to deal with this change. Mm. So maybe more about how eventually in this second job, the finance, mm -hmm. uh, banking and finance modules help. So within, within ALJ, right, so Abdul Latif Jamil, there is financial services and I am uh, kind of working and working very closely with the sector. So eventually that's where all this uh, knowledge of the banking industry helps. Uh, having a both, I think I took courses like bank risk. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's still yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, bank risk. I took courses like oh, uh, portfolio management. I think they were, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so all, the, all these are the courses that uh, I took. Uh, eventually, those were very important uh, for me as a foundation to understand financial services industry. I think as Dr. Chanika mentioned, right uh, at the start, the financial services industry is huge in, in the world. So like it is kind of a core industry for a lot of countries beyond just uh, Singapore itself. So that's where uh, m uh, it is important. And eventually, as me looking more towards financial services industry sector, uh, there are a lot of changes in the financial services in industry as well, in terms of how financial services mm. are being delivered. So mm. there's whole digital transformation aspect. You know, that's where uh, the digital transformation aspect, uh, people are using more direct. So people are preferring less branches. The people are using everything on the phone the mobile phone. So I think that, that's, that's the element. And then there's also element about the ESG component. So I think that's what Dr. Chanika mentioned as well in the, in the MAS map, you know, sustainability mm -hmm. finance. And these are topics that are growingly important. You know, how do you make sure that financial services are more inclusive? You know, and, and, and that's where uh, I'm glad that, you know, and MBS have kind of shifted their um, modules and also kind of catered to, towards what is needed out there. Because eventually I think when I was undergrad, there wasn't that four pillars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now there's yeah. that four pillars. You know, and, and, it, and it does help you kind of chart into what you want. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah and I'm glad right. to see that there's also like fintech yeah. as one of the pillars. Because I mean, that's definitely a topic that uh, all financial services, the, the, all, everybody's talking about. Either you're in an industry, even if you are not in an industry as a tech player, a lot of them are entering financial services. Mm. You can see Grab, you can see uh, Alibaba, and they were all non financial services player, but eventually they also ventured into financial services and offering uh, deposits, loans, micro insurance. So beyond just the banks, a lot of people are talking about it as well. So I think that's where, um, yeah, the banking and finance courses, back to the question, the banking and finance courses did help. 
And ultimately, there's one element, which is the business case. Mm. So I have to use the DCF model or this it, to kind of prepare the business cases for the businesses for new investments as well. So I think those did help me in my current role. Mm. DCF model is a discounted cash flow model. Yes. Okay, all right. And uh, one interesting thing that I would like to know is uh, uh, how did you find the second job? Ah, mm. yes. um, I would say it's true network. I think that, that, that's one <laughs> element, I have to be frank. Uh, and that's really true network. And that's where, um, yes, you need eventually to, through your time. It was, and it was a network that I had when I was, when I was in internship. So that was when you know, I had that six months internship. You, you grow relationships with these people, you build rapport with them, uh, and they see you as a trusted individual. You know, a, 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 uh, in a workplace, they, they see you as someone who is responsible. And I think this relationship, they last. And actually that, that was how I landed in this second role of mine, whereby, um, yeah, people approached and like, hey, you know, there's this new opportunity. Will you be interested? And, you know, it was an opportunity. It was an interesting opportunity. I never expected myself to be um, joining a Middle Eastern company <laughs> in my life. So, <laughs> so I think to me, I mean, that, that's something that, you know, be, also, be open about it also. Mm -hmm. I think that's one thing also when you're in the workplace, be open about opportunities to not shut down something just because you think it's something, I uh, think it's not really good. Be open about it, listen to it, and then you never know where you will land. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And it is good to explore, you know, yes. not only domestically, you to go international, yes. right? Uh, yeah. uh, okay, all right. Uh, I think uh, that, that's all that we are going to talk about today. Okay, so the time is up now. And uh, if you have more questions, uh, please post your question on the slido.com and we will answer the questions uh, through the, our social media. Okay, and thank you for joining us today. Choose MBS because it empowers you to be your best. Because it helps to discover a better you for the future that you dream of. Basically, to find yourself and to learn how you can make an impact in this world. Come to MBS to experience a different you. See you at MBS. See you at MBS. See you at MBS. See you at MBS. I look forward to seeing you at MBS.